Hey guys, welcome back. It seems like it's been so long since I have checked in with you guys, but it really wasn't that long. It was just the other day when I was at the yard house having some very delicious jambalaya. And it was actually my first time at the bow house. I mean, the bow house. The yard house. You guys, go check out that video. But anyway, I just want to do a kind of a quick video we'll see how this goes you know I always say i'm gonna do a quick video and end up being like an hour or so long but i just want to kind of like do this topic like real quick like real quick like let's see how quick we can make this video on this whole idea about 35 and ticking now i thought about this because you guys saw the movie uh, it's like I think it was a low-budget movie done with by Kevin Hart, 35 and Ticking. Y'all remember that? It was something like that, like 35 and Ticking. And I think it followed, like, the, the story of, like, some women. And not, not just women, but men, too, who are, like, in their 30s and, you know, still trying to find the right one, you know, still trying to find the right partner. And y'all know your girl, 35, right? And I find it to be quite interesting because this is like a kind of response video to some comments that were made on my McTow videos. Um, Y'all have to go back. I don't really want to go into explaining this whole McTow business, right? But in response to my McTow videos, somebody had commented and was like, she's hit the wall. And so I didn't know what the hell that meant. I'm like, hit the wall? what wall <laughs> I just thought it was funny and so somebody had in my response video um, they commented it was like this is what hit the wall means and they told me that it, it means back. basically a woman and they talk about women so I'm like okay interesting it's interesting a guy's perspective and not just a guy but the certain segment of this What's up, my phone? But certain segment of this McTow population, right? I ain't gonna say all McTow men think like this. Like we already established that not all McTow men are the same, but a very small population, small group of men who have been tainted by their past experiences with women just have this negative, very negative, very pessimistic view with relation to women, and it's it's sad. I mean, that's a whole nother video. I can do a whole nother topic on that. But some of those men actually took to my video and were commenting, like, letting out their frustrations, telling us, showing the world, like, how they see women and all this, right? And so one of the guys, I don't think he really had a negative perspective. He was just trying to give me some insight as to what they mean by when a woman hits the wall. But they're basically saying that a woman kind of ages out of the, the, the dating market, I guess, where she appears to be less appealing to men and he said that usually this like women hit that wall or this occurs around like when she's 35 years old and i'm like I, coincidentally i'm 35 years old but i definitely don't feel like i hit the wall and they describe it as a sexual peak so symbolically speaking i'm you know when you think about it and just imagine hitting the wall when something hits the wall and it just comes down okay facebook need to stop breaking up my freaking videos but they say that it's like a, a woman experience like she hits the wall and there's like a sharp decline i guess in her propensity to be able to attract men or you know have successful dating relationships and i'm just like interesting like i feel like this topic is very dynamic you guys and you guys know i kind of talked about you know the dating scene out here in la my experience with it being an african-american woman and especially living in hollywood because when i first moved to la i was living in hollywood for two and a half years and we know hollywood is predominantly white and so it's, it's just different kind of demographics so i talked about you know my experience and that and hope you guys go back and watch those videos where I talked about the whole dating scene thing and the possibility of dating outside of my race, you know, just to kind of find love, right? But this whole thing about hitting the wall and with respect to age, I'm just like, I never thought of it that way. But then I started to think about it. It made me think. I was like, hmm, do I feel 
like I hit the wall because of age in terms of the my dating viability. I'm like, I don't think so. I mean, the dating scene always been difficult, but I wouldn't say for me it's because of age. I mean, if anything, I feel like throughout whatever stage a woman is is in she's always going to have men hitting on her right like i mean you don't have to be an attractive woman to have men hitting on you like men are just out there and at all different stages no matter if you're 18 if you're 25 35 45 i mean i know some 50 year old women that still be getting it in you know so i wouldn't say age necessarily is a factor to a woman not being able to date like they're saying that oh as a woman ages she becomes less appealing to men and it makes it difficult for her to secure a partner because in their mind they're looking at her as like used goods so to speak like every man and ran through it so what man want to marry that and i'm just like what they may be speaking on the optimal ages to conceive as far as anything else about attractiveness is bullshit. Don't let Hollywood bleach your dom chica. This is not Hollywood though saying this. This definitely is not Hollywood. These are, like I said, you probably missed the beginning of my video, Matthew, but these are tainted men. Like, these are men who have been, their whole perception has been warped by their own personal experiences. And, and marrying women, I guess, or dating women, who they've had bad experiences with, a bad, you know, relationship with. And so, that, that, these comments are coming from them. This ain't from Hollywood. So, don't mix up my statements. I'm articulating myself so you guys can understand what I'm saying. So, don't mix up what I'm saying. But, that's why I'm just like, what? What in the world? I just talk about that in terms of the context in which I've made previous videos about my difficulty in the dating world and it was relation to race because i was in hollywood and hollywood's predominantly white so let's be clear what they are talking about is in terms of age right so i'm like but you did make a good interesting point about the optimal optimal age to conceive so yes and with respect to the topic of this video 35 and ticking it has to do with okay a woman's biological clock because we know that as a woman ages yes it becomes i think a little bit more difficult to conceive for some women but that's not all women though i don't know because you got some women that still conceive in their 30s and their 40s shit even i've seen i came across stories of women conceive in their 50s so i don't know about that but i yeah women you know i think traditionally women are more fertile like you know as a teenager or in their 20s that's why a lot of teenagers get pregnant it's like very easy for a teenage girl to get pregnant because yeah yeah she's very fertile but they're ta they're not talking about fertility here they're talking about like attractiveness you know or degree of you know being appealing to a man and i'm just like i don't get that because as women age, men also age. And when, you know, it's not like women just getting older and men are just staying the same age and getting younger. So those men, as they get older, not every man likes a young tenderoni. Like some men like women their same age, you know. Some men like older women. So I don't see it as, oh, well, women, Basically, her dating prospects decrease as she gets older. I don't see it like an indirect kind of relationship with respect. How they described it, like in my in response to my video, how he said it. I was just like, huh. They call it hitting the wall. Basically saying a woman, like, you know, hits a, a certain point where basically nobody don't want her. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know about that because... You see younger men that are attracted to older women. We talking about, like, men in their 20s and 30s wanting to be with like i say you know 40 50 year old women now i don't see myself in my 40s or 50s talking to no 20 year old. that's not my thing i like older men but yeah I, and i haven't experienced i haven't experienced necessarily or i don't conceptualize my experiences in terms of dating about age because i attract men all kinds of men you know it has nothing to do with that 
And I think that it is, I mean, depending on a person's lifestyle, because granted, I mean, I do things like I do go out and I interact and I meet people all the time. Right. But I think it also depends on your preferences, which like I said, I already made a video on this about like my own personal dating preferences. And that's what I kind of want to talk about in this video a little bit too, <laughs> because yeah, I just been having some conversations, but like, and some, okay, some people say that, oh, you know, you have, you need to lower your standards. Your standards are way too high, you know. You're not going to get anywhere if you have high standards. But for me, I don't see my standards as being high. Because even like I, I have this long list of items that, or criteria that a man has to meet. Like, oh, you got to be this, this, that. Like, no, I do have a certain type that I'm attracted to. And I feel like given the way our society is, <sighs> It's a small pool of men that fit that type. And all my type is, I mean, I'll tell you guys, I said it before, but all my type is, is that I, I do like dominant men. Excuse me. I just say, but I do like dominant men, like alpha male kind of men. That's my type. And some, I think sometimes people assume that because, you know, I'm educated, I'm working on my PhD, that, oh, I only talk to guys who are like, you know, are educated in the traditional sense, like, you know, through school or whatever, and, or have PhDs. Like, no, you don't have to be a doctor to talk to me or a lawyer to talk to me. Like, I'm attracted to many different kinds, but yes, I do like intellectuals because I like to be able to hold, you know, hold conversations and stuff. And with that, it's difficult because some men might be intimidated. Like, and I've I talked about this. I made a video on why. Are men intimidated by a smart woman? Not all men, of course. All men are not <laughs> Richard. <laughs> why are you looking like that? Not all men are intimidated, you know, by um, a woman who knows how to how to hold a conversation, or a woman with a brain, you know. But you do have some, and y'all have to go and look at my comments. I'm like, what is it? What is it that y'all like? Men feel that they have to attack a woman because whatever success that she has you know it's like that's their way of trying to pull her down because they feel a certain kind of way like they feel inferior so that's their way to pull like i don't like those kind of men i like a man who is confident like he's secure and he's so secure in himself that my because i'm kind of alpha female so my level of dominance and confidence is not even going to be a threat to him that's all I'm saying. And I've realized that when I come across certain men who, when I have a conversation with them, I don't know if it's my vocabulary. You know, like I got like the most freaking advanced vocabulary. I mean, I do have a vocabulary, you know, but it's not like, you know, I just feel like I can tell when some men feel like, oh, she's too much. I've had some men even tell me before we even get started, like they just count themselves out before we get started. Like, oh, you too much for me. You way out of my league. And I'm like, dude, really? You already fell before you even started. And I even did a snapshot. You know, I didn't show the guy's name, you know, a picture, but I actually did like a screenshot of a conversation I posted on Facebook where this man actually felt that way. Hold on, y'all. I have to relocate. But yes, I um, I actually did like a screenshot, and I sh I showed you guys. Hold on, set you guys here. Wait, is this gonna work? Let's see. Can you guys see me? How about how's the lighting? So yes, I actually did like a screenshot of the conversation where this guy like. I don't know. He felt some kind of way. He felt intimidated. I don't know. And I'm like, dude, we didn't even have a conversation. But he's like, oh, you well over my league. And I'm like, really? How do you know that? Like, it's interesting to me. And it's it's a challenge. Hold on. Let me. um. How is that? Is that better, you guys? <laughs> but it, to me, like, it is definitely a challenge, you know, when you come across people it's not that i don't i come across all kind of guys and guys just you know they shoot their shot and i'm like dude you gotta be confident when you're talking to me because if not my confidence will eat your ass up hold on y'all let me know what y'all think real quick let me um do something quick. 
Yeah, it's just like, come on, man. Have some confidence. Have some some esteem in yourself, you know? And then I think some of it is due to men. Like, let's say if you are religious, right? You know, you go to church and you believe in God. And I know with religion, especially with Christianity, they tell you, oh, you got to be humble. And I'm just like... Some men a little bit too humble. Some men, they, some people like put too much stake in religion. They're like, oh, you know, God, this, it's nothing wrong with believing in God, right? But have confidence and faith in yourself. That to me is a, is a turn on when a person has faith in themselves. And I like men who are leaders. I like men who are not followers, but you know how to lead. You know how to influence, you know? I've had a man, like I was talking to, he was like, well, I don't think I'm your type because you say you like, you know, dominant men who are, are influencers. And he was like, I'm not a leader. I'm not an inf I'm like, oh my gosh. Maybe I shouldn't even say what my type is because I think there are certain nuances to relationships too. So yes, just because I say, okay, this is my preference or this is the kind of guy that turns me on, don't mean that I may not be attracted to other kind of men who don't fit that certain criteria. Like... And that was a guy who I was talking to in, when I went to New York over the holidays. I'm like, I forgot I had told him this. But he was like, yeah, you told me that um, you like guys who are leaders and who are influencers. And I know I'm not a leader, so I don't think I'm your type. And from that, he felt insecure. I'm like, oh my gosh. It was not my intention to make you feel insecure. It was not my intention to like try to put you down or like, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. You know, it's like, I just want a man that can be comfortable in who he is and be strong, be able to protect me. Just a traditional man, you know, and not be intimidated by my success because you're, y'all men, this is the thing. Y'all men be like, oh, I want a man, I, I want a woman, you know, who's smart, who's witty, who's attractive. Then when you get that, you, <laughs> you don't know how to deal with it. Because that kind of woman, of course, is going to have men who are attracted to her. And you don't even know how to deal with these other men who are hitting on her. You know, like you feel some kind of way. You feel insecure. But that's just what it is. You feel, I've, done, I've dealt with this before, you know, with my ex who I was with, you know, for three years from New York. He felt insecure. And I'm like, it's not, I ain't trying to make you feel insecure. You know, the fact that I get a lot, a lot of attention when I go out, you know, and men hit on me. The women not really looking his way, but men hit on. I ain't trying to attract attention. I, I do nothing to when I go out to attract attention. I dress very conservatively. You know, I got dreads. That's I mean, to me, that's I'm just a plain Jane. I'm basic. I ain't got these extravagant hairstyles or. You know, with my ass out, titties out, nothing like that. I just, I mean, people going to look. If you got a nice looking woman who exudes this kind of spirit about her, you're, it's going to attract attention. And as a man, you got to be comfortable in who you are. If you got a woman like that, to know how to handle situations like that, you know. That's where it becomes a problem. And this whole thing about, oh, setting your, your standards are too high. I don't, my standards ain't too high. I ain't never said, oh, my man got to make a million dollars or this or that. You know, no, we got to be on the same page. And he cannot be intimidated by my success because I'm only going to keep rising. You know, so this is the thing. Men so they want a woman that got this and got that. But no, they a lot of times men don't. Because as a woman rises, and sometimes she rises more, like, higher than him, you know, making more money than him, you know, has more success by traditional standards or whatever, getting more attention, has more influence, they feel, men feel some kind of way about that. That's all I'm saying. You know, you sometimes men feel some kind of way, but then they say, oh, they feel they can handle it. Initially, they're like, oh, yeah, this is the kind of woman I, I like. I like her. That's what attracts them. But then when they end it, they're just like, I don't know if I can handle it. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Hold on. Be right back, y'all. Let me know what y'all think.
back. I'm back, you guys. I'm back. So. Yes. And even just recently, like, I've had a person. I can't mention no names. But I had a person that actually had the nerve to tell me that my standards are too high. And that I'm not going to get far in the dating scene, so to speak, because I'm opposed to dating men in jail. And because she's open to dating men in jail. <laughs> I ain't never heard such thing ever before. Oh, my God. Okay. It's, y'all, there's so much shit going on. Uh, my colleague just messaged me. She got a whole situation going on. I'm she going to wrap this up, but... So, it's going to tell me that, yeah, like, because she's open to dating a guy in jail, and I'm not. She's like, oh, you're not going to get that far. And I'm like, first of all, you don't know what I got going on. And I don't tell people necessarily what I have going on. Like, y'all don't know. I don't get people play-by-play play of my relationship with whoever I'm talking to. I saw a ghost on screen while you, <laughs> you saw a ghost. <laughs> hey. I believe you, Matthew. You probably did see a ghost. And it's a good ghost. It's not a bad ghost. I'm pre- you probably did see a ghost. <laughs> I, sometimes I think I see ghosts where I live, in my room, and when I'm around. You know, I think it's just my guardian angel. No demons. It's good ghosts. My guardian angels. I have all kinds of angels surrounding me because the devil is busy. I actually was going to title this video that, but I was like, no, nah, I ain't going to make a video on that. But the devil, y'all, because my homegirl just messaged me. She had a whole other situation on. I'm like, yeah, the devil busy. The devil is busy. So with the devil being so busy, you have to have spiritual protection around you. But... 35 and ticking. I feel like I'm good. I'm not worried about it. You know, I, I know sometimes I get on here and y'all hear me talk about, oh my gosh, my biological clock, I want some kids. And actually one of my colleagues, she just had a baby. He's so cute. She had a baby. She she brought him to campus and I held him and I'm just like, oh, it's going to make me have baby fever. I already got baby fever. It's going to make it even worse. And so, yeah, it'd be moments like that where I'm just like, oh, I want a baby. And then, you know, sometimes part of me be like, I just, I can easily make a baby with anybody, right? Like, you know, just find a sperm donor. <laughs> There's a lot of sperm donors walking around here and just get pregnant by, I mean, that's a piece of cake. The reason why I don't have kids is because I feel like I'm very selective. I have to be, like, because I want to be with this guy. I want us to have a family together. Like, I want it to be long-term. And I, don't, I ain't trying to be somebody's baby mama. That's easy. To be a baby mama, like, if that was the case, shit, I would have been pregnant. I would have been fucking, I would have been had kids by now. So, yes, I am very selective in the kind of person that I choose to be with. But one guy was like, oh, you know, you should. <laughs> he was like, just get you a, a blue-collar guy. I was like, hmm, blue-collar. I don't, I don't think I ever thought about that. Blue collar guys. I guess my eyes kind of been on like white collar, white collar guys. But hey, blue collar, you know what? Blue collar shit. They good. They. My thing is this financial stability and making sure that, you know, a guy can meet me. You know, have like I'm bringing in a certain amount. Dude, you got to match that or come better. You know, like I ain't going to be taking care of no man. You got women that proudly do it and that's them. I don't judge them, but I'm talking about as for me. Like I say, as for me and my house, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody where I'm taking care of your motherfucking ass. No. I ain't trying to be taking care of no man. And then be struggling. Like, I've seen that. I've, I've been exposed to women, literally, struggling financially. To, to to take care of the fan they, t- they do too much man women black women are freaking superpowers super women you know and granted we can do it but i'm like why why should i have to if that's the case shit i could just do in vitro fertilization by myself i don't even need a partner for that i could just be alone you know if i'm gonna do do shit alone 
why get emotionally attached to somebody and get pregnant by them and do all of this if the motherfucker ain't even going to be there, you know? So I think that, yeah, that's, that's always my biggest fear, but I'm good right now. My main focus right now is finishing school. I have some great news. Unfortunately, I can't share it because it's best that you end up jinxing yourself stuff self when you share great news. So I'm like, I have to just kind of keep it under wraps and I'll give it to you guys later though. I got some, a lot of great things have been happening in my life. Like my future is looking great despite how busy the devil is. My future is looking great and I'm just feeling great right now. So yeah, my priority is just finishing my program. Um, I did have like two semesters left, but I actually extended it a little bit. Kind of not really extended it. It's not really extended because I'm still going to finish by spring 2020. Um, but yeah, initially it was two semesters. So it'll be, it was fall this year and then spring 2020, but I added another semester, which includes this summer actually. So I'm still going to get done by the same time, but I'm just going to do this summer so that my elective, I have two elective classes that I take fall and spring one each semester. I'm actually going to take both this summer. So that will only leave me with one class remaining, you guys. It's a year-long class that I'll be taking for the fall and spring. And then, your girl, it's going to be done. And I'm just going to be moving on. And I feel like this freaking PhD program definitely has been a long journey. And overall, when it comes to my dating process, I ain't worried about it. Like, dude, it's men everywhere. It's men all, all over the place. I never had a pro I never had a problem getting a man. I never had a problem like for me I don't focus on oh I got to get a man like cuz I like men I attract people, you know, whether men or women. I ain't worried about that. But in terms of ba a baby then yeah. I'm like, dang. But then again, I'm like, nah, I, I, what do I have to worry about? You know, I feel like I have, I still have time to procreate. So I just kind of put things in God's hands and know that things will work out for my benefit. And that's it. I would like to hear what, what you guys think about this whole hitting the wall thing. And, oh, as a woman get older, like, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, things get worse for her? I'm like, I ain't had that experience. I'm good in that department. And I don't think any other woman, it don't matter what she look like or whatever. I don't think women have that. Ex now, I don't know. Maybe men, maybe as y'all age, I think maybe they were talking about they self. When men, <laughs> as men get older, like maybe y'all become less attractive, you know, unless y'all making more money. Now, when y'all age, if y'all salary increase with that age, then that's a different story, but... Nah, especially black women, we age gracefully. Like, baby, I'm 35. I'll be 36 in September. Do you see all this beauty? Like, I have, I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. Definitely not worried about that. But hey, drop your comments below. I think I do got goals because I'm like, my door is just open by itself. That's the reason why I came in my room. I'm just like, why my door just open by itself? Y'all, I am home and my front door. It opened, and I went outside to look, and I didn't see nothing. How my door just open? No one is out there. This is weird. <laughs> it has been raining a lot lately. I don't know. Who knows um, who it was, but they weren't outside. I know how to fight, so I ain't worried about none of that. And I got knives in the kitchen. Hey. It, it go down up in here, but I ain't worried about that. I feel like I have great energy around me. And even if there are ghosts, then that's my guardian angels to protect me. But, hey, feel free to comment below. Share your thoughts on this video. Women, I need to hear from y'all. been hearing from a lot of these mixed how men who are just bitter and angry. And I'm like, damn, who hurt y'all? I'm telling them, I'm trying to inspire them say that it's women out there. Not all women are the same. They look at like all women are the same. They've been hurt by whatever women they've invested a lot of time, money, energy to. So they feel like, why even bother with women? You know, women are just trying to suck them dry. I'm like, not all women. 
Y'all gotta get the right women. That's just like women saying all men are dogs. You got this hashtag thought, you know. So because I actually made a video about McTow, not even bashing them. I'm just in the pure curious about what is McTow and why. And they just rated my video with these hashtags, thought this. I'm like, I ain't no thought. I ain't fucking shit. I mean, I could. There's a lot of dicks walking around here. But I'm like... I ain't fucking shit. Your girl abstinent. I don't fuck unless I'm with somebody. You know, like, I have to be really with you, you know? I ain't just out here fucking random dicks. I'm good on that tip. Quick question out of the context. Is marriage serious couples should have access to each other's phone? That is a good question. Should people have access to each other's phone? I don't know. Should they? Hmm. Oh, I know what that is. But, um, I don't know. Should they? Should married couples have access to each other's phone? Why not? I mean, what purpose would that serve? I think it depends on the purpose. What purpose... Does it serve to have access to your partner's phone? If you're doing it because you're insecure, then no. No. Just to feed your insecurity? No. But if it serves like a purpose, let's say, I don't know, maybe they're business partners, you know? So some people, some business partners, they have access to each other's passcodes because they share the same kind of account. You know, they both manage, you know, they help manage this uh, business and it's connected to the same account. Then, yeah, that makes sense. But what's the purpose? Richard, what is the purpose? Why should each partner have access to each other's phone? Why? What purpose? No, if it's to feed some insecurity, no. Nah. Because that only creates more problems. And that's about control. You sh and then you're trying to control what's going on in that person's phone. No. I totally disagree with that. But, Yeah. I was talking about these MGTOW, yeah. I just, I feel like, yes. That's just like when I was talking about the MGTOW and how, you know, they all bitter and stuff. And they got this hashtag, oh, thought this. And I'm just like, come on, man. Y'all need to be healed from all of that anger and that bitterness. Like, the world is not, it's not that bad. You know, there are great women out there. There are great men out there. And if you've been hurt... Sorry, my heart goes out to you. You know, shit, I've been hurt by men, but I don't mean I'm just gonna be like, oh, fuck all men. All men are dogs, and you know, have this freaking movement against men. I think they should have nothing to hide to each other. Yeah, nothing to hide, but I feel like even within a marriage, right? there still should be a sense of autonomy. And just like, I think the question came up too about a mother and their child. And should a mother, you know, have access to the child's phone? I'm like, no, that's their privacy. Like, let the child freaking have a sense of autonomy. You know, why do the parent, why does the parent feel like, oh, they need to be all up in their uh, child's phone? It's like, oh, safety. It's just like, no, no. That's just, you just want to have control. Why do you need to control the next person, you know? It should be trust. If there's trust there, you don't need to have access to nobody's stuff, you know? But with respect to the parent-child relation, somebody was like, oh, well, it's not that the parent doesn't trust the child. They just, they just don't trust outside people. And I'm like, yeah. But you can't protect the child from every single thing. Like to me, that's doing that's going overboard with it. You know, if you something is going on on your child's phone that can uh, put your child's life in danger or jeopardy, I'm sure you're, that's your child's responsibility to say, "Hey, mom, you know, somebody texted me or somebody emailed me this crazy thing." You know, I just feel like helicopter parents just doing way too much, man. And it's for them, I feel like it's just creating more anxiety. Why? Yes, I feel like, yes, in some ways people can say we live in this dangerous world. The world is dangerous, right? Um, 
But in my mind, I don't look at it like that, to be honest. I don't. I, don't, I feel like I can't live in fear. I, of course, you you smart and you think you have to be reasonable, right, about stuff. But I guess because the spirit in me, I just have, I'm calm. Like, even I remember when I, um before I moved to New York, I was living in Atlanta. And some people just say, oh, you know, I get so dangerous. You got to be careful and watch out because it's gangs. And I get to New York, I ain't had that experience, man. That was not my experience, you know. Uh, same thing coming out of California. Oh, California got gangs. You better be careful. You better watch out. And I was, I moved to Hollywood, and people were like, oh, Hollywood is so dangerous. You know, is it? Sure. I don't worry about stuff like that. I love Hollywood. I moved to. Um, I keep saying I moved to Inglewood. I just learned, y'all. I don't even. I don't even live in Inglewood. This is not considered, it's near Inglewood, but it's not Inglewood where I live. So I've been calling this Inglewood the entire time. And I just learned, this ain't even Inglewood where I live. I live like five minutes from USC. It's like that area, but it's not, I thought it was Inglewood, it's not Inglewood. It's still considered Los Angeles. So I'm like, interesting. But either way, I still call it Inglewood because it's close enough. So when I moved to Inglewood, which I like, by the way, people were like, oh, you better be careful. It's dangerous. It's a hood. It's a... And I'm just like, y'all see my expression. I don't, I can't live like that. I don't look at people like, oh, just because you black or just because you poor, you are a threat to me. So I need to have my guard up and. Be walking around scared as fuck. Like, I ain't living my life in fear. I live my life. I create my own reality. And my reality, I feel like I'm in control, you know, of my perspective, my experience of this world. You know, I paint the picture of how I want to view people and see the world that we live in yes crime happens and things like that but i feel like a lot of incidents are very isolated a lot of incidents are um targeted like usually they know the person you know it's very like it's not likely that okay yes there are gangs there's some fucking random gang remember just going like oh let me go get her she's got dreads so let me just go and try to like <laughs> I mean, knock on wood, but, dude, I ain't had, I haven't had, that's not been my experience, man. Like, I feel good. I feel safe, you know. Nobody ain't trying to rob me or rape me or kill me. And I didn't live in all kind of neighborhoods. Like, I'm from the hood, so. I know this is a little bit off topic, but I'm just saying, just shake you. We are in control of our own reality. And that kind of goes back to this whole MGTOW thing. And her people are just so freaking tainted. They, they, you have a bad experience and they just see the world through that lens of this bad experience that they had. And they think all people are like that. And I'm just like, there ain't no way to live. I can't live like that. So I feel like we create our own prisons in our mind of how life is and really life ain't like that you know we share this same world with anybody else and i look at people who are happy and i'm like shit if they happy and we all live in the same world right this is the same this is the same planet earth how is it that some people can be happy and free and they don't lock their doors and some motherfuckers just looking at their shoulder and paranoid and oh my gosh and Fuck that. I choose my happiness. And the same thing when it comes to relationships. And some people mind, they may feel like, oh, there's no hope. You know, all men are dogs or all women are thoughts. And that's that's a terrible reality to live in. Like, And they send the period. I let them, some of them anyway, I let them project their negativity in the comment section on my MGTOW videos because I actually was curious to just see different perspectives of men. I'm just like, damn, y'all is fucked up. Y'all have to go look at my MGTOW videos. I'm just like, dang, they, whatever women, they fuck y'all heads up, man. And so by me being a the woman, they like started to like project this negativity onto me just because I'm a woman and it reminds me, them of their past bad experiences. I'm just like, 
life is short. You know, it's terrible to have to, especially if you're a heterosexual man, to just give up on women altogether. You know, like, just because I have a bad experience with one or two knuckleheads on me, all men are like that, can never, like, come on, it's too, too many men out here, great men, to just be, just give up hope. Like, that's bad. That is bad, y'all. That is terrible. But, yes, my future is great. I'm looking forward to sharing a lot of great news with you guys. I can't share it now because it's kind of still, like, developing. But, yeah, some great things are happening in my life. And I'll be, some changes are being made. And, actually, one of the changes, self-control, you could talk about. But um, one of the changes, actually, I was trying to decide, like, should I stay out here? I'm actually renting. I mean, I live in a house out here. Um, I call it Inglewood. And I'm renting. And the owners actually live right next door. That's the way I think that I came in. I was like, who is that? Because they actually do have access to the house, you know, being that they are the landlord, you know, of the house. They own this house. Um, it's a couple. It's a married couple. But they actually live in the house next door. Um, cause I don't plan to live, I don't plan to stay out here in LA. I plan to move back to New York, uh, when I finish. And then that's where I plan to buy my house, you know, in New York. But in the time being, granted that I do have like a year left out here, I'm thinking like, dang, should I move back to Hollywood? Because, you know, I'm, my, I'm in the process of transitioning between different practicum sites and only reason why I had moved out here was because of the practical site that I was working at. But now that that contract has ended, I'm thinking, I maybe could, huh. So many possibilities, right? I, I do love Hollywood a lot, a lot. So I just might end up moving back to Hollywood, but we'll see. And I also was contemplating on should I buy a car? And if I do, like, of course, I do plan to purchase it cash. Like, I don't plan on having no payments because I, I don't like the idea of payments so the girl might be rolling <laughs> all right well i'm about to go you guys feel free to continue the discussion below i'm sitting on the floor because i like sitting on the floor i like sitting on the ground the earth yes i have furniture but i just i just like sitting on the floor <laughs> but i'm gonna catch you guys later love you guys toodles